while you will be enjoying this debate, ladies and gentlemen, our seven jury members will consider four criteria. They will take into account arguments, presentation, teamwork, strategy, and thank you, the star quality, the je ne sais quoi. So, even if it looks like you are familiar with the rules and the format of the French style debates, allow me to remind you that the best debates or the most successful debates are the ones in which you have the greatest audience, ladies and gentlemen. So, that being said, if you want to express that you agree with what being said, you may say, here, here, thank you. Yeah. On the contrary, if you want to express your disagreement or that you are disappointed, you may say, Shame. I think that we shouldn't wait any longer before we meet the teams and their coaches, so please give a very warm round of applause to both teams and their coaches from the government, Robin Hatajak. Colleagues, break a leg. Yeah, you have 
good tie. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. So first, uh, before I, uh, you start uh, timing me, I would like to uh, say, <laughs> I, would like, I would like also to uh, express uh, my humble gratitude to all the women in the audience today because today. It's <laughs> Maria is going to tell you about her journey with the ghost of Christmas yet to come into the future and the dangers that await if we do not adopt this motion now. And finally, Gwenole, inspired by Scrooge himself, is going to whip out his eloquence and lay out the plans for the future. He will sum up what we will, uh, we will be learning tonight and he will extinguish any doubts in our fellow members of the opposition. We believe, like I said. Ah, excuse me, your question. It's too late, it's gone. Shame. Oh. Shame. 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 I'll take it. Take it how, how, how is giving some of your wealth not making you, making you unable to die rich? If you give only part of it, you're still going to die rich, just like Bill Gates is going to die rich. Yes. Very good yeah. question. Yeah. He's going to die rich, yeah. but he's not going to die filthy rich. So yeah. Yeah. Just this. Yeah. You see, my friends, when we talk about a rich man, we're talking about a wealthy person in full control of their assets in both, both material and mental. We're talking about, like I said, the filthy rich. Someone who has hoarded so much wealth that he is far, pa he is far past satisfying his needs or those of his family or his friends, if he even has friends. We're talking about the people who can lose the equivalent of Bulgaria's GDP in one Christmas deal and still don't worry about making payments for their houses, for their Ferraris, or for their wives' cleavages. We're talking about people who have reached the maximum level of consumer satisfaction and can't buy more because there simply isn't anything else to buy. We're talking about the people whose excess money can build, it could, uh, uh, it could educate, it could cure. Yeah, not shame. Here, here. <laughs> when we say disgraced, we're talking about a person who has no grace, a person who has dishonored himself because he selfishly sailed through life without oh, taking, never sense. giving. We're talking about what are you talking about? Shame. 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 I mean, <laughs> According to your definition, if I have parts in private equity fund, five or six houses, but you know, no more. I don't have fifty billions like Bill Gates. Bill Gates, sorry. I'm not rich. That's what you're saying. Well, by God, we believe that a man who profits from society without giving back is a disgraced man. He lives in luxury, but he dies in yeah. And yeah, we believe that if you do nothing to help society, to nothing to develop it, to improve it, when only need what the only thing that you need to 
give is your money from which you have enough. That's what, my friends? Shame. Shame. That's a disgrace. <laughs> yeah. Members of the opposition, you may say that the government cannot impose such emotion on the people, but of course you're wrong, and of course we can. Just open the penal code, and you'll see that the failure to help another person in need in a dire situation, uh, if that help would not bring you harm, uh, means that you can be prosecuted in front of the court of law. Well, what we're proposing here today is far less constrictive, but with far deeper consequences. We're saying that you can be prosecuted in front of the court of public opinion. Yeah. Yeah. People like Andrew Carnegie, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, and many, many more have set the example already. They do not intend to die rich, filthy rich. They intend to give while they live, to administer their wealth themselves while giving it away. Huh? They believe that today as wealth needs to solve today's problems, my friends. There remains only one mode of using great fortunes then. But in this, we have the true antidote for the unequal distribution of wealth today. The reconciliation of the rich and the poor. A reign of harmony. A new deal. Where the surplus wealth of the few will become, in the best sense, the property of the many. Because administered for the common good. But be wary. We're not talking about overtaxing. We're not talking about uh, like pointless charity. We're talking about philanthropy. Organized yeah. and concentrated. Yeah. Fortune magazine recently published a study which showed that if the Forbes 400 richest people in America give, uh, take the pledge of giving while living, they, that will add another 600 billion to U.S. charities alone. Yeah. Imagine yeah. what that money could do. We're not proposing new taxes. I'm saying that again. But this is not a debate. This is a revolution. And it is happening whether we like it or not. The floodgates have been opened, my friends, and the bill gates have been opened. So adopt this motion. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Let me now call for the shadow Prime Minister, Adrien Favre. Distinguished members of the jury, members of the government, I'm sure we will never tire of hearing your long introductions. Yeah. Fellow yeah. members of the opposition, yeah. 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 ladies and gentlemen, a man passed away last year, a man who was fabulously rich up to and including his very last day, a man who refused to pledge most of his fortune to charity. And yet, a man who died honored everywhere. Yeah. Steve Jobs died rich. Yeah. Because he had a vision. The man was no saint. And if you want to talk about his flaws, his biggest one probably was that he did not care about the working conditions of the people making Apple products in China. But if, if we can reproach him with that, yeah. it is not because we expected him to give his fortune to these people but because by choosing to keep it instead and remain CEO of Apple until the very last day, he had an even greater leverage to change things, but did not use it. Yeah. 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 You know, ladies and gentlemen, I got a feeling this government has a strange view of the world. First, I am tempted to say, it seems to me that when you die, you're not disgraced, you're dead. <laughs> Besides, I have to say, I think there are rich people in the world, besides the 400 people on the fortune list, and besides billionaires. Yeah, 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 yeah. You use the word filthy rich, no thank you. You use the word filthy rich, Mr. Mr. Vaksarov. Some people indeed still lie and deceive for money. And these are grave offenses. But apparently they can do worse, should they just decide not to give that money away. You know what? It might be the only legal thing they'll do in their whole life. Yet, the government is saying this is the real disgrace, this is where they finally fall from honor, lose respect and their reputation. On the contrary, according to these governments, you may have been rigorously honest throughout your life, but if you choose, as is your right, not to commit this financial harakiri, they want you burning in the flames of hell! if it was Steve Jobs' right to keep his money. Do you think it was morally right? Yeah. 
What I'm yeah. saying is, yeah. apparently, yeah. Yeah. there are 7 billion people on this planet who think it was right. Yeah. 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 We believe money still is one of the best rewards for hard work and talent. And my colleague Alain will demonstrate that the real disgrace, in fact, is that there are people out there who die poor and have talent, not the other way around. We are, we are, contrary to this government, we are in no case trying to start class warfare here by defending rich people at all costs, because there are as many good and bad people among them as in any other group in society. What we cannot accept though is this government making an absolute statement declaring there is no reason whatsoever to have money on your account on the day of your death. Well, let me tell you, there are plenty. Ensuring the company you founded stays on the right tracks. Making sure your name and work is used in a way you consider proper or just providing protection for your spouse. All these are noble enterprises, higher motives, reasons bigger than a single human life. And yes, I would gladly add giving all your money away to that list. But then, it is only one of the many options you have. What matters in fact, and this is what my colleague Gassien will remind us of, what matters is not whether you keep your money or give it, but whether the reasons you have to do so honor human spirit. <laughs> but it goes deeper. The imperative to Point ensure so Yes, please. Uh, how does Steve Jobs honor the, the human spirit? Can you elaborate on that, please? Well, yeah. you might not know it, but he helped bring about the personal computer revolution, and I think all of us know how, how this is important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and no, personal computers don't only refer to Windows systems, but that's technical, sorry. <laughs> There is an imperative. We all have hardwired in our brains by thousands of years of evolution. They is the one to ensure survival for our offspring. The reason most people on this planet work is actually to have their children have better living conditions. And this is the fundamental human instinct that this motion negates. But thankfully, Michael Lingye will remind us of that. You know what? The original author of the motion tonight, Andrew Carnegie, indeed, He's known for his rags to rich history, and he did give most of his fortune away, Mr. Vatsarov. But I don't think he kept none of it for his daughter, Margaret, and just told her, Go stop in Scotland, as I did and never kill nobody! No, I don't think he did, and in fact, he died very rich. We believe, in fact, this government is telling you only part of the story. There is indeed no person so pitiably wretched as that which possesses money and nothing else. It is, again, Andrew Carnegie who said that, putting the emphasis on the very last words and nothing else. These words matter the most. The government missed them, and Carnegie, who apparently is a member of our team, set the record straight. Here, here. Because we indeed believe it is disgrace, if you want to call it that way, when people die having nothing but their money. No friends, no legacy, no love. Because indeed, Mr. Babsarov, no one should be slave of their money. But then, this disgrace is only the result of a failure to build anything truly lasting, to get lost in something bigger than oneself, to have interest in the life other than one's own. And summing it all up to dying rich is a misconception with dire consequences. Because, ladies and gentlemen, nowhere Never do these pitiful situations happen only as a consequence of having the money. Thank you, Mr. Shadow Prime Minister. I'd like to call upon the second speaker for the government, Pascal Kofalo.
that where you travel lies, there is also your cute heart that I want to be mine. British <laughs> <laughs> members of the jury, other members of the government, immoral members of an immoral opposition. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. There has been a huge misunderstanding. I want to address it. The government does not deny the right to be rich. There is nothing evil about owning the things we need. We do need people to get rich. We need them to amass fortunes. But once they have, we need them to share it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good way of shaming because it blinds the others' sufferings. I come to you like the ghost of Christmas past to make you remember the golden age which produced our greatest philosophers, our greatest prophets, our greatest moral leaders. In their own words, Buddha, Mohammed, Christ, Aristotle, carried the very message of humanity, the message of love, the message that makes you die in disgrace when you die filthy rich because you have forgotten where real wealth lies. Yeah. Yeah. In Dickens, afterwards, in Dickens' Christmas Carol, Scrooge, ex Scrooge experienced love. Yes, he did. Indeed, in his youth. But after the first months of passionate love with his fiancée, another idol replaced his beloved. He fell back into solitary pleasures, erecting a new temple for a new idol. Yeah. To the gracious curves of his future ex fiance he preferred the cold angles of gold bars. Yeah. He should have listened to his first teaching. The great book says in the words of St. Matthew that it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Well, since you're quoting the Bible, what happened to the only man who actually gave all his money away in the Bible? I'm talking about the prodigal son. I think it was a, it was a disgrace in the end. That was a good rich man, because he gave it to her before he died. Yeah. Yeah. This was put into song by a man as profound as St. Matthew, someone whom I call truly the searching apostle. An expert in money had his name shows Johnny Cash, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. How many times? Have you heard someone saying, yeah. if I had this money, I could do things my way. Yeah, yeah. But little they know that it's so hard to find one rich man in ten with a satisfied man. No one can serve two masters at the same time. Christ himself said so, and here, here is our second moral teaching. Extreme accumulation of material wealth is immoral because it is a hindrance to love, faith and solidarity. It punishes your own very soul. Yeah. Look at the recent scientific yeah. study that was made public by the Berkeley University last week, actually. What does it say? It says that the very rich are more likely to lie, cheat, and steal. They are liars, cheaters, and thieves, and what's worse, they cut everyone, else, everyone in traffic. Big hurrahs, stretch limos are not for stopping at red lights. Ferrari means priority, is that what you want? <laughs> I just would like to know if your emotion is uh, a thief is disgraced or uh, a filthy rich is disgraced? Exactly what we say. We're defining the word buying rich as being over the top rich without sharing. <laughs> Keeping for yourself and not sharing. <laughs> and there comes our third teaching. Your morality does not come from what you have. No thank you, I won't take anymore. But from what you do. So say Buddha. And he approves his message. <laughs> we have to tackle this filthy and disgusting hoarding of wealth because it's brought about by greed. No, thank you. Because it makes men and women blind to other people's sufferings. It is the duty of any government to guide the man created by the Western society. A man that has this greedy look in the eye that shows he has passion for wealth inside. Sure. Obviously, I can't, yeah, I cannot see, sorry. I, I cannot think it's true, the innocence of the golden age. What I can see instead is a profitable business of bringing poisonous greed into the veins of people normally humane, of young men, of sending young men and young women, young enough and young polytechnicians climbing the social ladder of ambition of money as the unique goal of the education. Oh, thank God. 
young idealistic researchers of Thomas II. It still exists! It still exists! They still exist! They don't care about money and they don't know about capitalism. But so, for everyone else, for everyone else, there is Bureau Card MasterCard. For everyone else! But is it moral, ladies and gentlemen? Sure. The very rich have to give it away before they die, because with great wealth comes great obligation. Andrew Carnegie understood it, it's called philanthropy. And here comes our final teach. Without sharing your money, you will die forgotten by many and despised by the few, the few that can remember you. As being always stingy and bad, never sharing the wealth you had in the eyes, you will stay just another rich bum, forgetting forever where you came from. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what history shows us. This is what great philosophers, great preachers taught us. Remember this golden age when you had Steve Jobs, Johnny Cash, and Bob Hope. David will show you that we have no job, no cash, and no hope anymore. We can't let things get any worse now. We shouldn't let things get any worse, and we won't let things get any worse. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, this is why, judicious members of the jury, I beg you to adopt the motion. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Delicious, artistically ringing bell. <laughs> Dignified members of the jury. Classy members of the government, you have beautiful size, and I'm sure the tailor would die rich, but not disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and thank you for coming. It's a kind of spiritual snobbery that makes people think that they can be happy without money. Not that I would dare call you snobbish, ladies and gentlemen of the yeah, government. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's Albert Camus who does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most people don't want to have money for nothing and the cheeks for free. They don't want to die filthy rich, but the motion doesn't only apply to filthy rich people. It says only rich. They just want to spend their old days visiting the world and be rich enough not to care about money and to afford a mechanical bladder. Is that shameful? No. Now, Albert Camus was not rich. He dedicated his life to understanding what made life worth living. But then, something terrible happened to him. Something outrageous. A complete dishonor according to this government. In 1957, he was awarded the Nobel Prize, thus earning one million of today's euros. To make things even worse, no thank you, he died in a car crash two years after receiving the money, which left him with no time to drop the hot potato, <laughs> sealing his doom. <laughs> And if you believe in the ridiculously absolute statement that is the motion proposed by the government, then you have to agree that he died in disgrace. But the problem is, no one will agree on that, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. you said people should share their money, and we agree with that. But when Camus died, was his money wasted? This government seems to think that you can actually take it with you, and that once you're dead, your money is buried with you to keep you warm and protect you from the world. Yeah. Let me tell you, let me tell you what happened to the million Camus got from the Nobel Prize. Well, first, a part of it went to you, ladies and gentlemen from ENA, to spend it in the name of the state. So I think you should be more thankful to people who die rich. Yeah. Yeah. But the other 
other part, ladies and gentlemen, it helped his family, it protected his children, and it allowed his widow to live in dignity. Now, as to whether Camus is a disgrace for France, history will tell, not this absolute and dangerous motion. Mr. Vatsalov, you refer to Carnegie. Well, thank you very much for quoting the most illustrious member of our team, as my colleague Adrien already underlined. A man who is still praised today, though he died with the equivalent of 400 million dollars. Is that rich enough for you, Mr. Babsarov? Yeah. Yes, he did, he did give up to 4 billion, but he still died with 4 million, and that makes him very rich. Yeah. Warren Buffett pledged to give 99% of his wealth, and in his public statement he wrote, and I quote, This pledge will leave my lifestyle untouched, and that of my children as well. As long as he clings to his private airplane, I, I think there's no need to worry about his financial welfare. But on the other hand, what would have happened if Carnegie had applied his extreme motto to the end? His daughter Margaret wouldn't even have enough money to pay for the two hundred million, uh, sorry, two hundred thousand dollars of tuition fees to study at Carnegie Mellon, a university he, her father created. That, ladies and gentlemen, would have been selfish and disgraceful. But again, this is not what happened, because Mr. Carnegie knew that in the very words of the Bible, charity begins with oneself, and I may add, yeah. with their children. And my colleague Ingi will show you how important it is to keep money in your family. Yeah. Yeah. But the truth, Mr. Blank, is that for most people, dying in disgrace means dying poor. And indeed, a lot of artists who are now glorified, whose paintings are sold millions, actually died disgraced. Not only, not only is money an efficient incentive for creation, as my colleague Gassien will show you, it is a fair reward to talent, and that's why the Nobel Prize and each and every intellectual or artistic prizes come with a financial reward. You want rich people to die disgraced. We want people that make our lives worth living to die glorious and rich. Yeah. 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 advantage of the system and I don't see why he wouldn't enjoy the money his books earn him or why it should alter the respect that I have for him. On the contrary, I as a human being take it as a disgrace for our whole species that Vincent van Gogh was wearing rags on his deathbed. I take it as a disgrace for everyone that Mozart didn't even have enough money to afford the doctor. And most of all, I take it as a disgrace for this government to say that it's a good thing they didn't die as rich as they deserve to be because otherwise they would have been disgraced. Yeah. In loving memory of these great people, I must beg you to reject the motion. Thank you. Filthy rich is, is like pornography 
you, when you see it, you know what it is. of the ghost of Christmas past, laid out by Pascal, I will now bring forth the world of the ghost of Christmas present. He will show you that if you become filthy, stinking rich, and you don't give back, then you are hurting our very heart. The heart of our society. Our economy. Yes, please. Well, could you clarify and really define either filthy or stinking or both because you really need to know what you're talking about I and mean, you're saying, you know, dying with 400 million I'll call that pornography Okay, maybe you could define pornography in your speech and then we can put it Thank you <laughs> Your condition has told you that many people earn lots of money because they are useful and creative and they are, you're right but it's not the issue at hand the issue is, really, when you got rich, no matter how you got there, what do you do? What do you do of your wealth? Because you cannot spend it, obviously. So, Mr. Sad, you talked about uh, not taking money to your grave. And you're right, you cannot take money to your grave. But you can put it in a safe. And if you put it in a safe, counting it every night, like my precious. <laughs> then what happens? People are waiting for your death. And when you die, not now, when you die, people are singing hallelujahs and doing the full monty on your coffin.
But if you go after ordinary people, then we're fine. Please help yourself. But really, no, please, really. Is it the kind of society we want to have? Is it really? Because you see, the Leviathan you create when you have that much money is a damaging monster. People who could consume are hindered by the Leviathan when the beast itself can only devour. And we, the government, believe that the, the master of the beast has a personal responsibility to repair the damages its creation is causing the economy. This is the message of the ghost of Christmas present. And this government, ladies and gentlemen, has not been elected by money. It has been elected by standing up for what is good for this society and for its economy. Because this time is a time to strive for truth and justice. With economic difficulties, we have no choice. It is a time to hold in contempt what should so be held. It is a time to remember the royal
months, I had 3,000 euros on my account. This felt come from my parents, my uncles, and even my 80 years old grandparents. For me, the small sum of money embodied the love and hope of the whole family. And its power urges me to excel. To return my family, I want to stay rich so that I can support my family whenever needed. I want to die rich so that my children will inherit my wealth along with all my hopes and blessings. I believe that my gift to my children will help them, inspire them so profoundly that no charity could ever achieve. Yes, please. Like, uh, you said that Asians are, uh, for them it's like very important to have money and die rich and blah blah blah. Okay, are all Shame. Asians. Shame. Shame. Are all, all, Judging. Are all Asians material? Are all Asians only oriented uh, towards money? Don't they have souls? Yeah. Are Asians. Yeah.
Won't you take a look around? Just look up and you will see when it's coming down. Dear guests, ladies, enjoy this International Women's Day, for it will be one of the last. Gentlemen, welcome and beware. I'm shaking tonight, as you can see, for what I've seen is scary. I bring you news from the spirit of Christmas yet to come. I've seen the future. I've been there. And I'm here to warn you. <laughs> Approve this motion before it's too late. Things may not turn out the way you have hoped. A man who dies filthy rich is a man who's di who dies disgrace. <laughs> Live like you might die tomorrow. Don't die like you were expecting to live forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Society has forgotten to have a goal. It only worries about means, but has no end. Do you want just death to be your end? Yeah, yeah. We're giving you another end, another choice. Scrooge saw his corpse, unwept and uncared for, and made the decision to change. You, I, I just want to know, uh, Mr. Fallow, Mr. Sad, Madam Tan, you have been calling us rich all throughout the debate. We're government officials. How much do you think we make? <laughs> and if you make that much, in a moment, please. If you make that much as to think that government is rich, then I, I tell you people, beware of this opposition. Because this is why the things that I saw in 2047 happened. So, let me bring you to my vision. Please, go ahead. Are you ready to say to everybody here that Mr. Sarkozy earned 150 euros a year? 150,000 euros a year, or Mr. Barack Obama who earned 400,000 euros a dollars, in that case, a year, are not rich. <coughs> We're talking about millionaires, not thousandaires. <laughs> Let me show you how things will look if those filthy rich that the opposition is defending don't change their selfish ways. The year is 2047. 100 families now hold and control 95% of the world's wealth. Yeah. The owners, as these families are now known, cannot safely live amongst us, nor do they want to. They are even suspicious of their own dog's affection. They have formed havens in strategic locations and hired bodyguards, and then bodyguards to protect them from the first bodyguards, and so on and so on because they can't trust anybody, and they find themselves suffocated under layers and layers of Kevin Costner's. I come from Colombia, people. Trust me, I know what security means. Some countries, in dire need for money, will bow down to their new masters. European countries have finally sold Greece to the owners in order to stabilize the euro. Without resources to run the countries, the Middle East has become the main gas station in the world. <laughs> Conservative parties, yeah. not like you, <laughs> in the rest of the world have consolidated power and revealed all taxes on the rich. Yes, please. Then why don't you forbid that people become rich? Because yeah. we want people to become rich. We are just saying there's three stages in life. One stage in which you educate yourself. Another one in which you develop your your fortune. You, you, um, you accumulate in order to come to the third stage in your life where you actually give it back to society. As I was telling you, our countries are bankrupt. In order to be able to rescue economies, they have been, a, they have been, <laughs> they have been obliged to look for corporate sponsoring. We now go to California, known as the McDonald's Coast. New York is now Goldman Sachsia. Mexico, Taco Bell. <laughs> Finland is Nokia Hills. There are no longer any state taxes for the rich and no state of Texas 
for the poor for the thousand layers. Now, 90% of the money put in medical research goes to solving the needs and wants of just 10% of the population. Most of it goes to male sexual enhancement and breast implants, rather than to curing common diseases like Alzheimer's. By 2047, we have old women with perky boobs and old men walking around with erections, but none of them can remember what they are used for. Yeah. You keep telling us you don't know what filter rich means, but money has a smell, and this new world stinks. Pascal talked to us about the loss of Johnny Cash. Steve Jobs and Bob Hope. Let me tell you that by 2047, Courtney Love and Kevin Bacon are also dead. Do you really want to live in a world without cash, jobs, hope, love, or bacon? Don't let this happen and adopt this motion today.
put epitaphs on the grave stating whether or not people died disgraced because they were rich. Wouldn't this look strange? Somalia, he would be as poor as every other Somalian. Here, here. Here, here. Yes, he would be as poor as any Somalian in Somalia. But he had the ability to make thousands and millions of people work and to allow them not to be poor or at least to have a decent amount of money. No, thank you. Indeed, some rich people do not care about being disgraced and do not care about humanity. But if we follow this government, if we remember the definition of being disgraced, which means losing your honor, which means losing your reputation, well, if you are forced to give everything away, where is your good action? Well, how do you improve? If you have to give it away, you don't win any reputation. And therefore, with this government, you would die disgraced. Yes, please. Yes, so you're saying that if you accumulate and not give back, you're disgraced. So could you elaborate on what kind of condition makes a man disgraced? What I'm saying, I'm not saying that I'm here to judge people. What I'm saying is that it's not because you have money on your bank account that you are disgraced. I'm not yeah. telling you who is. Yeah. You are yeah. telling us that some people are disgraced. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 And I believe that... No, thank you. And I believe that being a disgrace is much more serious an offence Mr. Valsarov, than, than being selfish. If, if a man dies with all his money, he dies selfish. If a man, but the real disgrace is to die without caring, without doing what you can for mankind. If you want to see disgrace, come in the prison cell with murderers. There you will see people who are disgraced. Yeah, 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 yeah. And millionaires are only selfish for most of them. And some of them indeed are disgraced. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of them, I'm not saying absolutely all of them. And a rich man can be a man who acts for others. A man who creates jobs. A man who acts. And a man who allows others to live. And without this leaders, Without the stock market, the economy would be stuck and yeah, the state hey. wouldn't have any money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, this would make the government poor. And they would be disgraced. And so will the entire society. If you have no investment, no one, everyone else will be a disgrace. And I beg you to reject this motion. Yeah, yeah.
If you don't, that means that you have hoarded power, you have hoarded energy. And it's something you can take with you, and let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in life there are no reruns. And this answers, this also answers what uh, Mr. Fanu has said, because, no, sorry, Mr. Saad has said, sorry, not now, about, about uh, Albert Camus, well, Albert Camus was hit by a bus, well, in the, after 20, 20 kilometers in his marathon. That's hardly his fault. That's hardly his fault. He didn't purposely die rich. He died rich by accident. Many Sorry, not now. We haven't heard many misconceptions today. Mr. Fellu tried to make the age-old argument of his corporate overload, overlord. Sorry, he told us that the, we need rich people. Yes, well, we do. We said it. We said it time and time again. I wish you yeah. listened to it. And we do, but we doing, but doing good things in the first part of your life doesn't excuse greedily sitting on them after you after it. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Sad, and I will just finish with that. Mr. Sad has tried to confuse you with shameful tricks. He said that many artists died disgraced. Well, first of all, I would argue that Van Gogh and Mozart are honored in eternity. <laughs> and secondly, it is a disgrace that many die poor. Yes, but why do they die poor? Because others hoard. Because others keep yeah, their wealth. Yeah, and if they yeah, share, yeah, then why do they die poor? Mrs. Tan told an inspiring success story, and we really want to congratulate you on it. But I, I was sad to hear that she equated the money her family gave her with love. Let me tell you about my inspiring story. My parents were not rich. By any standards, they were not rich. But they, give me, they gave me a real wealth of culture, of love, of support, and of affection. And those are more valuable than any check they could ever give me. I also respect her desire to get rich. But why, if she's not going to use that money for good? What, what for? What for? What's the point having the most beautiful tombstone in the gravesite? That's all today's problems, and we can't afford to wait. Mr. Bon, finally, you said you wanted people. We wanted people to, sir. Right, right, right after that. You said we wanted people to 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 renounce freedom. Well, we don't want people to renounce freedom. We want them to be free, but freedom comes with responsibility. It has no meaning without responsibility, and we sure as hell going to shame those who use it who don't use it well. Deny that what you've just said is that people must have ideals, but then you know when you die or hell breaks loose, you don't care about what happens because you're not there. You know, freedom. What do I care? I'll be dead. Money yeah. is not an ideal. Money is not an ideal. Money is a, is a means to us achieving an ideal. Yeah. 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 I ask you, do you want to praise Ebenezer Scrooge from the Christmas Carol, who? Turn at the very, at the maybe late, but he did turn his life around. He did save Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim, this little boy, respond, who represents every dying child around us, every dying child that we could cure, that we could save, and that we could help. Or do you want to be Jacob Marley? Jacob Marley, who died hoarding his money and came back to haunt the world because he didn't, he realized too late that he could, what he could do with his wealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to be? Do you want to be this? Yes, please. I do not believe I do not believe that money is part of biodiversity. I believe money is used when is better used when in circulation, which is not the case of trees. <laughs> so, do you want to remain? Uh, do, do, sorry, do you want to remain the same, this very same oblivious of your oligarchs? Hoarding, heartlessly hoarding humanity's heirlooms while children die on your doorstep? Or do you want to better yourselves? Well, for me, I want to be able to say like Scrooge, I know I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three, I'm not taking any more questions. The spirits of all three, subscribe So do not shut out the lessons taught today by our Prime Minister Nicolas, who, who like the modern day Jacob Marley, put this debate before you, warned us of the dangers of hoarding money, and showed us what other opinions we have. Do not shut out the lessons taught by Pascal, who, like the wise ghost of Christmas past, reminded us that being rich is not about what you have, but about you do what you do. Do not shut out the lessons taught today by David, who, like an astute ghost of Christmas present, showed us how much more useful money could be if it was spent now instead of tomorrow. And do not shut out the lessons taught today by Maria, who, like a brilliant ghost of a gloomy Christmas future, showed us that the world would be a chaos if we left it in the hands of the heartless. This is why I call on you today. I call on you and I call on everybody to join us in fostering the living while giving pledge. Living, sorry, giving while living. Giving while living. That is the important thing. 
Don't be Steve Jobs, be Bill Gates, don't be Marlies, be Scrooges. Tiny Tim is everywhere. All over the world, but also there are very street corners. There are children in dire need of medical attention, in dire need of love, in dire need of, of, of food, of, of an education. Let us be there with millionaires. Do not sit on your piles of gold, or you will have the, the, the or your hands will forever be red from the blood of the tiny tins. Should they refuse? Should they refuse, Madam Chairman? Should they refuse, Madam Timekeeper? Should they refuse, honourable members of the of the jury, so rich in beauty and wisdom? Should they refuse? Charitable and philanthropic members of the audience. Should they refuse members of the government? Should they refuse members of the opposition? I call on you to cover them in shame and in disgrace as long as they live. And I call on you to spit on their graves when they die. Yeah. 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 We will spit on those same graves. Because this house strongly be firmly believes that any man is guilty of every single good deed. by writing a check to some foundation you know nothing about. <laughs> As my colleague Gastia emphasized, sales of indulgences are out of date and nobody is going to avoid disgrace just by giving some of their money away to charity. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen from the government, what you have failed to take into account in that is that the motion indicates full commitment. It's not this house believes that the rich should at some point get rid of their riches and donate or blah blah blah. No, it yeah. says yeah. die not rich, die like the average Joe, otherwise dishonor and disgrace. Yeah. But you yeah. the government have found sneaky ways around that imperative. And your whole climax, no thank you, you're still t telling the rich, you know, give only half, it's good enough. Come on, you're trafficking ideals. You're like the moral mafia, for God's sakes, and it's all just a petty bargain for you, and for us, and anyone with the little moral sense. That is dishonor. Yes, sir. Uh, do you really imply that disgrace is the most severe punishment that society could uh, bestow on somebody? I think that it's I think, capital I th punishment. I think, I think yeah. if you care a little bit about my kind, dishonor is the worst type of punishment. Yeah. Yeah. opposition are still willing to respond. Ladies and gentlemen of the government, you mentioned Bill Gates and said if he kept his money instead of doing what he does, he would die disgraced. First, as my colleague Ada said, the man is still going to die bloody rich with more money than you or I will ever make in a lifetime. Four hundred millions is filthy rich. So talk about financial sacrifice. No, thank you. How easy is it to give to charity when you're still certain to keep a nine-figure bank account? Yes, Mr. Batsarov. Even King Abramovich the Filthy could came into such a logic and give away one or two yachts and would provide underprivileged kids with an opportunity to go on a cruise on a big fancy boat once in their lives. But the truth is, it would cost him nothing because he'd remain still so incredibly high above the threshold. And for that reason, no redemption for him on those grounds because life is not a board game. It's not, wow, you just gave away two yachts. That's ten extra great points for you. My co 
colleague Adrien said. That's what makes Bill Gates more than a selfish businessman. The commitment, the time spent, the vision, not the checkbook. And that's the difference between those two billionaires, Gates being a rich man who's going to die rich and honorable, Abramovich being a rich man who's going to die rich and perhaps not so honorable. Yeah. And Mr. Yeah. Reef, maybe yeah. someone want to make sure that nobody gets their money. But to we, the opposition's knowledge, very few people want to be buried like the Egyptians with all their belongings that nobody can touch. Maybe crazy Abramovich will do that, but he's going to need a pretty big grave if he wants the yachts, the airplanes, and the helicopters to open in there. Mr. Kohlfeger, quoting the Bible, you said it will be more difficult for a camel, no thank you, to pass through the eye of a needle than for rich men to get into heaven. I say it will be more difficult for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for you to retrieve your soul after you've reduced the motion in such a filthy way. <laughs> Bastards are bastards. Yes, please, sir. Yeah. 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 If, you're so, if you're so sure in yourself, why are you sweating like that? Yeah. 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 I'm, very, I'm very sorry to, to put so much passion in my speech. I yeah. Yeah. Just like gingers. <laughs> just like the rest of your team, no thank you. You didn't address the question of dying with millions on your account. Well, yes, you did, but before the Prime Minister said billions, not millions, and then you said millions is okay as a reply to a point of information. So I wonder how long you're gonna go before the filth hits all of us. Obviously, obviously this government is already rubbing in it, but that's not a reason to drag it also to drag all of us in there. <laughs> also, I don't actually believe that you can see in the future. <laughs> The truth of the matter is that there is no fundamental difference between the rich and the poor. Most of them are neither Piksu nor Leviathans. They are the same human beings with the same temptations. Only the rich can fulfill more of them. But an honorable man remains an honorable man. And if he's rich, he can do whatever he sees fit with his money. And you won't die disgraced just because this government wants him to be that way. In fact, as my colleague Nini emphasized, by trying to pass this motion, you want the end of innovation by killing the natural incentive to be a successful hey, entrepreneur. No. You're taking away from us the desire to achieve something because you cut off one of the main rewarding aspects of it. And a society that lives according to those standards is irrevocably crippled. Mr. Buck, you are right about one thing. There are no hey, reruns yeah. in life. But what you're proposing, what this government is proposing, actually means taking another shot at communism. This government wants to make an absolute out of a moral superiority that they cannot handle themselves, that Andrew Carnegie, the very author of this motion, could not even handle it himself. So let the proposition live their absurd fantasy and reject this phony motion. Yeah.